Welcome back to Andan and Bigel. Joining us on set now, the head of the EMA, as we look at the situation surrounding Plastic Heap. As you know, uh, yesterday we spoke with officials attached to Plastic Heap, and they uh, are they're demanding some answers and they want the Minister of the Environment to say exactly what's taking place uh, with the program. Members of the Beetham community calling on the administration to assist them to not only get some solutions but to get some answers. Uh, the head of the EMA is here to provide some of these answers. Dr. Bajan, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Hema. And good morning to your viewers. What's going on at Plastic Heap? Well, Hema, I can't exactly um, that, that, that issue with regard to Plastic Keep and the Green Fund funding is only the Green Fund can answer that question. I could tell you what, is, what has been taking place in the country with regard to recycling. Um, a lot of credit has to be given to an entity like Plastic Keep, an NGO. I mean, as you know, I have come from the bowels of the NGO movement as well. And uh, the, the, they, they have created the impetus to bring recycling to the fore in Trinidad and Tobago. And much credit must be given to them for that. Um, but since, from, and as indicated yesterday, um, they have been having this program operating for the last five years. And a lot of lessons have been learned coming out of this program, and as well as the direction to which the country has to move if we have to meet the challenges of recycling and, and getting recycling as part of our mindset within the country. I'll tell you this, right now we have about a, a thousand tons of garbage going into our landfills right now. The Beetham landfill is, is our largest landfill and it takes 65% of our, 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 our municipal waste inside of there. Mm -hmm. The end of the day, the Beetham dump cannot, in, ve in very short time, will not be able to take any more uh, of, 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 our, of our waste. We have to basically address this issue of recycling. What has taken place? Um, the recycling, the, the solid waste policy has been passed by, 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 by the cabinet. Leading from that, there is the development right now through an interministerial committee, led by an interministerial committee, and uh, funded by the IADB, uh, integrated solid waste management strategy for Trinidad and Tobago. What has also taken place is the national recycling policy has been adopted by cabinet last year. So we are moving forward. So in keeping with that now, what we have realized is that there are multiple facets that have to be addressed with regard to the issue of addressing recycling. Mm -hmm. Collection is one component. The population has to buy in to the, 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 the process of collection. Um, but then we're talking about, in the process, we're talking about sorting. There's also bailing and shredding. Um, and then the issue of how do we deal with this recyclable material in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, the Green Fund and Plastic Heap, they're all out of the NGO movement. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that they have outlived their usefulness, or what exactly is going on? Absolutely not. I don't see Plastic Keep out, 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 outliving their usefulness. I see Plastic Keep, and, and, and I mean, Roxanne hinted it yesterday. Mm -hmm. We have been having discussions with Plastic Keep. EMA has had discussions with Plastic Keep with the intention of how do we take the lessons learned from what is taking place in the country, and how do we develop the enabling environment that would allow for, 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 for a recycling initiative to basically not only benefit Trinidad and Tobago, but also to work. Because here, here's the situation that, that, that entities who are collecting these, the, these, the, the, the recyclable material, as Plastic Keep has done, how do we dispose of it? Who's collecting it? Do we know? One of the challenges Plastic Keep had was in terms of getting a uh, uh, an entity that um, has met all environmental clearance um, requirements to basically take their material. That has posed a challenge. The next question is, is that one of those companies actually shut down, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it is because of the manner in which it was disposed. There, there, there are questions with regard to where this material is going. Um, so that, that matter has to be addressed in a holistic manner. And that is where we need to take this. 
Yes, it's emotional in terms of... It is, because there's an online petition and people want to Correct. know with an initiative, uh, that they, that's such a good initiative, but, why are we not supporting it and helping it? But it's not that it's not being supported. It has been supported for the last five years, but we need to now take it to the next level. We now need to let this kind of, this impetus that has been created by Plastic Keep not be lost, but to grow and evolve. And Roxanne said it last night, um, yesterday in your program. She said it needs to be taken to the next level. Now, how are you going to take it to the next level and assist Plastic Keep? Because obviously this is gaining traction uh, on social media. Well, there is a program that is now being developed. I mean, as I said, we need to understand at what levels that we have to address. We, the EMA is currently in the process of um, putting in place our um, solid waste rules. That have, would have implications to, 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 to processes like these from a, from, from a regulatory standpoint. Um, so what has to happen is that, as I said, the enabling environment has to take place. We've had discussions over the last few months with entities coming into country as well as local um, um, companies wanting to establish recycling facilities to address the waste here. Because as everybody knows, internationally, recyclable material is big business. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is, how do they get a ready supply of product? So there needs to be a process in place whereby this product is channeled such that it is available so that the business side is able to develop out of this. Um, and, and, and that is what has to be put in place, and that is what is being taken place. Um, there is a program that has been, that has, that, that has built upon the learning that has taken place in the, in, in, in the environment, and that is going forward. Um, and as Roxanne said, you know, EMA has engaged them in, 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 in discussion as part of the impetus to develop that program. Now, Dr. Page, and I think what people are concerned on is if Plastic Heap was addressing this particular need. Now, I understand that you say, well, okay, the need was being addressed, but maybe on a surface level, and there needs to be a deeper, uh, we need to go to find a, a, a realistic solution. But if you take this entity out of the equation, then what are we left with? No, but you see, Roxanne, that, um, that, Hema, that is not the, 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 the question at this point in time. Um, plastic Keep would always have a role to play in the recycling trust mm -hmm. in Trinidad and Tobago. Where do they, where, where exactly they, 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 they would like to see themselves playing going forward? I mean, I'll tell you something, they have an excellent education program. Mm -hmm. They have an excellent education program in schools. Um, that is something that you would not want to lose as well. I mean, it's one thing to talk about the collection process, but the education and awareness component that they have had from what I've, I've, I've seen and read is an excellent program. Um, so you would want to build upon that. Um, the, the EMA is moving forward, as I said, with regard to a program, and it is not intended that Plastic Keep would not play a role going forward. They would not be excluded out of the process. But as, 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 as indicated, we have to move this process forward. And we have to put in place the enabling environments, not just for the collection process. Um, the, the, there's, there was need for establishment of collection, collection centers, um, sorting centers in various regions um, so that they would be able for the public to bring, and it's not only about plastics, it's about other recyclable materials that we need to take out of the environment because of the, manner, the indiscriminate manner in which they are being dumped. So what is the EMA going to do to <coughs> assist organizations such as Plastic Heap and also uh, the future of this organization coupled with the green fund funding that comes out of that? Well, what, is, what the EMA is doing right now, as I said, is that we are in the process of looking at a holistic framework. A programmatic model has been developed that has gone forward. We have engaged a number of stakeholders, inclusive of Plastic Keep. Mm -hmm. And we, it, the, the, going forward in the way that um, the country needs to go forward as it relates to recycling does not preclude pre um, Plastic Keep out of the process. Okay. It, it is not, I have always been one Hema. 
to talk about inclusion. I have always been one to talk about partnerships. I have always been one to talk about how do we build upon the successes, learning from where have we have been deficient and making and putting things in place whereby we can go forward in a sustainable manner to address the deficiencies that we have in the system. And that is where we want to take this thing going forward. And how far have you reached with actually advancing this cause? Where no one is going to be left behind, but we're all going to move in the same direction. Well, as I said, Heber, it, 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 we, we have gone a long way from where we have been. As I said, from a policy level, from a legislative position, from a, uh, an area of awareness, from an uh, area of bringing stakeholders together. We have come a long way. I mean, just in a few short years, look at where we are with recycling, you know, um, and, the th and the thinking behind recycling. But we have to do it right. We have to start putting in place the enabling mechanisms, not just for the collection, but also for the disposal, and taking advantage of the potential opportunities of business development that may ensue from the mechanisms put in place. Now, I'm just going to read an excerpt uh, in terms of whereas the housing, uh, Plasky began stockpiling and warehousing plastics in April 2013, and this is not camp, but the core mandate, which is to reduce and recover plastics, but uh, has uh, proposed a short-term solution, and uh, they are looking for companies to sort of assist in, in getting uh, the waste actually moved and uh, uh, basically destroyed or dealt with in an environmentally uh, conscious manner. But, you know, with the Green Fund itself and moving forward with organizations, what the Green Fund uh, started with a laudable initiative. Uh, the screening process, the filtering process, and only assisting NGOs, and the mandate itself uh, for certain types of environmental causes. Don't you think it's outlived its usefulness? I don't think the, the Green Fund has outlived its usefulness. What I think is the Green Fund has to evolve. Um, I myself have faced the brunt of the Green Fund in terms of the process. I think the, the process of screening and the process of the evaluation by the Green Fund um, um, Advisory Committee is very stringent, and it needs to be. But I think where the Green Fund needs to be evolving is in terms of its, its flexibility towards addressing the needs of, 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 of the entities that access its funding. It needs to understand that projects are not static, it's dynamic, and it needs to be able to adapt to the changing requirements of projects in a timely manner. I think that has been a challenge. As you know, I, 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 the, the, the Turtle Village Trust, which is near and dear to my heart, is also a recipient of green funding. Right. Um, and we, we, we face a number of challenges there. But I mean, that, that, and as I said, I've always been an advocate that the Green Fund needs to evolve from not just project-based, but ecosystem services-based. We have to go straight to the 7 o'clock newscast. And